I am going to attempt to survive 100 days as a turtle in hardcore Minecraft. Will I become powerful enough to defeat the dangers of the ocean? What special abilities will the turtle tools give me? And what kind of secrets will I discover on my journey? On day one, I spawned into the world as a baby turtle, and I quickly noticed that I only had four hearts and that I was extremely tiny. I mean, just take a look at the size of this cow. It was terrifying. After realizing how hard it was going to be to survive 100 days as a turtle, I began collecting some wood to craft a crafting table and some sticks. Once the crafting table was placed, I made some basic tools like a wooden pickaxe, axe, and sword. But just as I had finished crafting, I heard some type of growling noise behind me. It was a giant wolf. I was in trouble. I headed straight for the water. But just as I jumped in, the wolf bit me. I just managed to escape with only two hearts left. And luckily for me, the wolf couldn't swim, so it ran back into the forest. So because I can breathe underwater, I decided to get some some kelp, and seeing as I'm a turtle, kelp is a great food source. I could use this to heal me. I swam to an island close by and took some time to relax and eat some kelp. I then saw that the sun was beginning to set, and being a small baby turtle, I knew I would not be able to survive the dangers of the night. So for that reason, I dug underground and collected some stone, so that I could craft a stone shovel. Having this shovel meant that I could collect some sand to build a small sand castle that could keep me safe for the night. Once I had enough sand, I began construction. I'll only be needing this sand castle for one night, so I decided to make it quite small. After placing down my crafting table, I was super happy that I had a place to spend the night. But before I went to sleep, I decided to eat some kelp. And just as I ate the kelp, I grew into a full-sized turtle. I couldn't believe it. I was super excited and saw that I now had 15 hearts. With a smile on my face, I went into my sand castle and got some rest. Before I knew it, it was the morning of day two, and I couldn't help but notice that when I walked out my sand castle, I could see another turtle across the water. I hadn't seen a turtle like this before, and for some reason it was gathering resources. I was super interested to see why this turtle was gathering stuff, so I decided to secretly follow it. Not only was I super interested to find out where this turtle was going, but I also thought maybe I could make a new friend. So I decided to keep on following the turtle throughout the day. I followed it through oceans and even snowy mountains, but eventually I found out where this turtle was going. It seemed it was swimming back to some type of island filled with loads of other turtles. But I could also see some fire from this island. I had to find out more. But before I do, I want to thank today's sponsor, Monster Legends. Monster Legends is a free-to-play mobile game where you can collect and breed hundreds of monsters that all have unique elements and rarities. I mean, just take a look at this month's newest monster, the Brain Ladon. This guy looks pretty powerful if I do say so myself. Oh, and did I mention you can level up your monsters to make them even more powerful in battles? And if you're a competitive gamer, you can even create your own team and put your skills to the test in real-time duels. Or even in the multiplayer mode, where you can win rewards and fight for a chance to be the best. Another cool feature is the YouTuber Island, which allows you to find some of your favorite YouTubers. Here's a dream monster, for example. Anyway, if you want to download Monster Legends, make sure to use my download link in the description, or simply scan the QR code on the screen. If you do that, you'll get 50,000 food, 300,000 gold, 10 gems, and the epic monster, Kaori. Having all of this stuff will give you an amazing head start. This is a limited time offer, so if you do want to claim all of these rewards, make sure you download the game now. Anyway, let's get back to seeing what's on this island. When I stepped foot on the island, there were a bunch of turtles, and they seemed pretty friendly. So I decided to walk past them and investigate the island further, and when I got onto the top of the island, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. The island was set on fire, and it seemed like it had been destroyed. But just as I was taking a further look, I awoken something from the sand. Don't hurt me, I don't want any trouble. <laughs> Relax, I won't hurt you. I'm a turtle, just like you. Oh, well, my name's Fru. Nice to meet you. What's yours? My name is Tony the Turtle King, ruler of the Sand Kingdom. Just as this giant turtle introduced itself, I then saw the turtle that I followed here from earlier. Hey King, here's the resources you requested. Hopefully we'll be able to rebuild back to normal. It seems like someone had trashed this place, so I wanted to find out more. Hey, so what exactly happened to this place? The mutant crab was here, haven't you heard? The mutant crab? The mutant crab and his minions are an unstoppable force. We used to live in peace until they attacked our island, stealing our supplies and destroying our homes. Oh no, I need to help you guys. I can't let the mutant crab get away with this. Unfortunately, little one, you are too. Too weak. The mutant crab and his army have gotten away with this for many years, and not even the strongest of warriors have been able to stop them. Maybe one day, 
When you're stronger, you'll be able to stand a chance. The Turtle King was right. I just wasn't ready yet. But with some training and better gear, I would be able to hopefully get revenge one day. So for now, I decided to repair some of the damages to the Sand Kingdom that the Mutant Crab had done. It took a little while, but in the end, I was able to get rid of all of the fire on the island. And for all of the other damages, I'm sure I'll be able to repair those later. But for now, I wanted to build my own home on the island. So I decided to swim off the island to grab some resources. The first material that I wanted for this house was some wood. So, I began chopping down a bunch of trees. And once this was done, I saw some coal up on a mountain. So, I climbed up and began collecting it. This would definitely come in useful later. And seeing as I was up in a mountain, I decided to grab some stone. I could use this to upgrade my tools. So, I made a stone sword and a stone axe. I then got even more carried away and saw some iron underwater. And, well, seeing as I'm a turtle, I'm able to spend as much time underwater as I want. So, I collected as much iron as I could find. I then got back to collecting resources for my house. Because, well, not only did I want wood to build this house, I also wanted some sandstone as well. So that's exactly what I did. I gathered up a bunch of sand and even saw some sheep nearby. I decided to take these out and grab their wool. I could use this for making a bed for my new house. After I'd gathered all of the stuff that I wanted to build this house, I went back to the island and began patching up some damages that the mutant crab had done. And then with the space that I now had, I began construction on my house. I wanted this house to be suitable for a turtle, so I kept it quite low to the ground and I even added a farm extension where I could grow all of my own food. The house took quite a few days to build, but once it was done, I was really happy with the end result. I thought the house looked pretty good if I do say so myself. Anyway, I wasn't quite done yet. I needed to fill up my farm with some crops. So I went to the nearby farming area and grabbed some potatoes. Once I had a few potatoes, I went to the farming area of my house and began planting them. Once I planted the potatoes down, the inside of this house was completely finished. And I mean, the main goal for the inside of this house was to keep everything quite low to the ground. Seeing as I'm a turtle, I'm really small, so this needed to be done. Before I knew it, it was coming up to nighttime. And one thing I wanted to do before I went to bed was feed the other turtles turtles around my house. So I grabbed some of my kelp and went round one by one feeding the turtles some kelp. And I mean as you can see the turtles really enjoyed the kelp. Once I had fed all of the turtles I made my way in my house and got some sleep. On the beginning of day 14, it was time to prepare for a mining trip. You see, if I was going to stand any chance against the mutant crab, I was going to need the best armor and tools I can get. And by going on a mining trip, I would be able to collect diamonds and many more things that would be able to help me in the battle. So it was time for me to go by myself and leave the island. I spent some time trying to find a cave opening on the surface, but well, I found something much more interesting. I found a shipwreck. When I got closer, I hopped on board and when I opened the first chest, there was nothing that good. But just as I was done inspecting the first chest, I turned turned around and found another chest. And this one contained a buried treasure map. I decided that it would be a good idea to make my way over to the Red X and see what type of buried treasure I could find. But just as I was swimming, a drowned threw its trident at me. It was time for battle. Seeing as I'm a turtle, I was able to move through the water with ease. I tried dealing some quick sword attacks, but the drowned was able to hit me from far away. I couldn't quite reach. I had to swim away and dodge every single trident. Luckily for me, I was able to find a hiding spot and took this time to regenerate my heart. As soon as as I was back up to full health, I decided to go in again. This time I had my shield. Every time the drowned tried to throw its trident, I was able to block it, which allowed me to get close enough to the drowned to take it out. Once I took it out, I also took out these other drowns as well. It was now time to get closer to this buried treasure. When I got close to the buried treasure, I decided to swim down and start digging to find it. And well, it was pretty easy to locate the buried treasure. Once I opened the chest, I couldn't quite believe what I was seeing. It seems I had hit the jackpot. Not only did I get a bunch of gold emeralds and diamonds, I also found a heart of the sea and the heart of the sea would come in very useful later because I could use it to help construct one of the turtle tools later on. Anyway, once I was done looting the buried treasure, I decided to keep on trying to find a cave entrance and not too long into the night, I was able to find exactly what I was looking for. So I decided to head down into the cave and see what type of valuables I would be able to find. As I entered the cave, I glanced around and saw a bunch of iron and coal. So I decided to get out my pickaxe and begin mining every single piece. I kept on exploring the cave and it led down to a mine shaft that was filled with hostile foes. But even more importantly, this place was loaded with goodies. I was finding things like gold, lapis, and eventually, I even came across my first diamonds. So after finding these diamonds, I continued to mine for the next few days. And well, it seemed that the diamond luck was on my side. I was finding diamonds, after diamonds, after diamonds. 
By day 22, I had not only collected 30 diamonds, but also a bunch more ores. And although having all of this stuff was absolutely amazing, a ton of monsters like creepers began to spawn. And well, I really wanted to make it home with all of these valuables in my inventory. So I decided it would be a good idea to start heading home. But before I began to head home, I made myself a fresh diamond sword and even smelted up a bunch of the iron ore that I had mined so that I could make a full set of iron armor. And because I had all of this iron armor, I would be able to stay extra protected on the way out of this cave. Anyway, I grabbed my crafting table and furnace and began to make my way out of the caves. Eventually, I made my way above ground. And well, it seems I was in some type of frozen ocean. I really had no idea where I was and how I would be able to get back home. And just as I thought things couldn't get any worse, I found another turtle and it just swam away from me. I was slightly confused, but I thought nothing of it and began swimming again. I had a feeling that if I was to swim in this direction, eventually I would be able to find the island and ultimately get back home. But just as I was swimming, something began to feel a little bit weird. You see, as I was looking around at all of the other fish in the ocean, I saw them swimming in the opposite direction. I had a feeling that all of the fish were swimming away from this shipwreck. So I decided to take a closer look and inspect this shipwreck. And just as I got closer, a giant kraken emerged from the shipwreck. I was in trouble. This thing was giant. And the only way I was going to be able to get back home was if I was to battle this Kraken. So that's exactly what I did. I was able to deal a ton of damage with my sword. Just as I was feeling confident, the Kraken had swallowed me. And as it spat me out, I was given the blindness effect. I couldn't see a thing. And because I couldn't see anything, the Kraken used this as an opportunity to deal a damaging attack. Eventually, I was able to see everything again. I didn't want to give up. So I swam back into action. I continued to swim fast through the ocean and dodge the Kraken's attacks and at the same time attempt to deal as much damage as possible. The Kraken's attacks were simply unpredictable. It even began to hit me with both of its tentacles. I was able to use my shield to block. I could now see that because I had the Kraken at below half health, it seemed to be getting exhausted. So I stayed close to the Kraken, applying as much pressure as I could. I knew that it would only be a matter of a few more attacks until this fight was over. And well, with one final swing, I had done it. I had defeated the Kraken. Now seeing as I consumed so much kelp during this battle, I was able to spot some more so I swam over and collected as much as I could. Having all of this kelp would allow me to regenerate my hearts back to full. I then spent the rest of the day trying to find my way back home. And well, luckily for me, it only took a day of searching to find the island. I was super happy to be back. The first thing that I did as soon as I got into my house was begin smelting all of my iron and dumping all of my goodies inside of my chest. I even used the diamonds that I had collected earlier to make a full set of diamond tools. But once I had all of these diamond tools, I realized something. If I was going to stand any chance at defeating the mutant crab and getting revenge for what it did to this island, then I would need something a lot more powerful than diamond tools. You see, turtles have extremely strong shells. If I was able to get my hands on some turtle shells, I could then make turtle tools, which are extremely powerful. And well, the only way that I would be able to get some turtle shells was if I was to bring some turtles back on my island so that I could collect their shells. So with this idea in mind, I began getting some shears so that I would be able to get my hands on some seagrass. I would be able to use this seagrass to bring some turtles back onto my island. So I spent an entire day exploring a tropical ocean and I used my shears to collect a bunch of seagrass. And then once I had all of this seagrass, I found some turtles at a nearby beach. I ended up finding two turtles, which would be perfect because I would be able to breed these together to get some baby turtles. And then once the baby turtles grow up, their shell will fall off. And of course, I'll be needing these shells to build the turtle tools. Now I spent absolutely ages trying to get these turtles back to my house. But eventually, I was able to get them onto the island and, well, the turtles were extremely slow when it came to walking on land. After a while, I was able to get them out the front of my house. So I quickly decided to make some fences so I could temporarily trap them. I quickly placed all of the fences down in position and I now had two turtles on my island. But it was coming up to night time, so I quickly decided to take out this zombie and get some sleep. Now on the next morning, I realized I couldn't just keep the turtles in here. They needed a bigger space. Because not only do I want to give these turtles a big area where they can swim around, I would also be breeding a ton of turtles, so I would need plenty of space. So seeing as I was going to be building an area to give these turtles a bunch of space, I decided to get the main material that I would need for this extension. And that was a bunch of sand. So I spent the next few days gathering as much sand as I could possibly get. And when I brought it all back to my house, I crafted up a bunch of sandstone, and I also made things like sandstone walls, sandstone slabs, Labs, and also some sandstone stairs. These blocks would be used for decoration. Once I had everything ready, I began building this extension. Now I decided to make this extension quite a decent size, seeing as a lot of turtles would be living here. And most importantly, I decided to make sure there was plenty of water for all of these turtles. I placed down some bone meal to finish off this build. The only thing I had to do now was get these turtles to move into their brand new home. 
By day 42, both of the turtles were in their brand new home. And well, it looked like they were really enjoying it. I thought it would be a great idea to spend a lot of day 42 just spending some time with these turtles. But then I quickly remembered that I want to get my hands on some of the turtle tools. So I began breeding both of the turtles together. I then realized this was going to take a little bit longer than I expected. So while I was waiting for those turtles to breed together, I went down into the depths of the caves because I wanted to make sure that when I craft my first turtle tool, I would be able to enchant it. So for this reason, I wanted to make an enchantment table. And to craft an enchantment table, I would need some obsidian. So for that reason, I began gathering some obsidian. Once I was done mining obsidian, I had 24 pieces in total, which would be more than enough for an enchantment table. I even managed to find four diamonds right next to where I was mining obsidian. That's pretty lucky if I do say so myself. Anyway, once I was done in the caves, I began making my way back home. On the beginning of day 45, I had successfully made it back home, and the first thing I did when I made it back home was check on my turtles. I wanted to see if there was a baby turtle. I spent some time looking around and couldn't see a thing. It seems like these turtles hadn't breeded. That was until I jumped into the water and saw the tiny baby turtle there. I was was super happy because I knew that when this baby turtle grows up, its turtle shell will pop off and I'll be able to use this to make some turtle tools. Now, because I had to wait for this baby turtle to grow, I decided to wait inside for the next couple of days until its shell pops off. And after a while of waiting, I found exactly what I was looking for. Having this turtle shell brought me a step closer to making the first turtle tool, but I would definitely have to keep on collecting more. I decided to keep this turtle shell safe and continue breeding the turtles together again. So seeing as turtles take a while to breed, I thought I would spend some time waiting by setting up the bookshelves that I would need for the enchantment table. The first thing I went out to collect was some sugarcane. And once I had this, I went over to my farm inside of my house and began growing some sugarcane there. Once I had placed down all of the sugarcane, there was only one more thing I needed for bookshelves. And this would be leather, so I spent a bunch of time going around and collecting as much leather as I could find. After a while of growing sugarcane and gathering leather, I was able to make books to ultimately make bookshelves. And then once I had all of the bookshelves that I needed, I crafted the enchantment table. Having an enchantment table was amazing because I would be able to enchant my turtle tools when I get them. And having enchanted turtle tools is exactly what I'm going to need to have to stand a chance against the mutant crab. The next thing that I wanted to do before I was to go back and check on my turtles was to construct an area where I could store my enchantment table. So I spent some time collecting all the wood I would need for this build. And once I had everything to build this new area, it was time to build. I really wanted my enchantment table to be super accessible so that I could enchant at any time I wanted. And once it was done, I was pretty happy with the final result. It was now time to quickly go and check on my turtles. And the first thing that I saw was a turtle shell floating in the water. That means that the baby turtle that I bred earlier had successfully grown. Anyway, once I had this turtle shell, I decided to store it in my chests and continue to breed the turtles. It was time to spend the next few days breeding as much as I could because I really wanted to get my hands on all of the turtle tools. Now, breeding all of the turtles together was a really, really long process and it took quite a few days. But seeing as I had plenty of seagrass, I was able able to go around and keep breeding the turtles. And once they had babies that grew, I continued to collect all of the turtle shells that they were dropping. After quite some time of breeding all of these turtles, I had 15 turtle shells, which means I would have more than enough to build a full set of turtle tools. So because I now had all of the turtle shells, it was time to begin crafting each tool. I began by making the turtle pickaxe, and then a turtle sword, a turtle axe, and finally a turtle shovel. Now there is one more turtle tool that I'll be able to craft later, but but it's simply too powerful for me to craft this now, so I would save that for the fight against the mutant crab. Anyway, I then spent some time just taking a look at how cool these turtle tools looked. And well, once I had took a look at all of these turtle tools, I thought that maybe these turtle tools would give me some sort of ability. And after spending a while trying to find out what this ability could be, I had no luck. So I decided to go out into the world to see if they would maybe be able to do something out there. And well, as soon as I dived in the water, I couldn't quite believe my eyes. Whenever I was to put one of the turtle tools into my hand, and I was given Dolphin's Grace. This allowed me to swim much faster through the water whenever I was to hold one of these tools. I was able to glide through the water at the speed of light. This ability was amazing. And just before I thought things couldn't get any better, when I got back to my island, I decided to test out the sword and this thing had the ability to do a critical damage hit. The power that this thing could deal was absolutely extraordinary. I decided to spend the rest of the night just having some fun with this sword. I was able to take out any mob I wanted with ease. This sword will definitely be very useful against the mutant crab. 
After having some fun with my sword, I decided to get some sleep because I now wanted to enchant all of my turtle tools to give them maximum power. So for this reason, I decided to collect a bunch of resources that I could use to construct a nether portal area. And once this was done, I lit the portal up and decided to head in to get some XP. I would be able to use all of the XP that I was going to collect to fully enchant all of my turtle tools. So I spent the next four days in the nether, collecting all of the nether quartz I could find. And well, I was getting a bunch of XP. After I had the perfect amount of XP levels to enchant all of the turtle tools, I decided to head back home. And the first thing I did when I was back in the overworld was grab some lapis and then head over to my enchantment table area. It was time to enchant. The first thing I enchanted was my turtle pickaxe and the enchant that I got was really, really good. I continued to enchant all of the other tools like my sword, axe and shovel and I was getting really good enchants for the rest of my tools as well. Once I was done enchanting, I was beginning to feel unstoppable. All of my tools were now extremely overpowered. But after looking at all of my turtle tools, I realized something. I really wanted to get revenge on the mutant crab for all of the destruction that it caused to this island. And I felt that I was beginning to feel ready to take on the mutant crab. So because of this, I now felt like it was the perfect time to begin preparation for the battle against the mutant crab. Now knowing just how powerful the mutant crab is, I would need to get my hands on the best armor and the best weapons that I could get. So the first step of preparation was to craft some diamond armor. But whilst I was crafting the diamond armor, I realized that I was one diamond away from completing the full set of diamond armor. And much better. After mining for some extra diamonds, I was now able to complete the full set of diamond armor. Now, because I had crafted diamond armor, I threw away my old set of iron armor and covered myself in diamonds. But I knew that even diamond armor wouldn't be powerful enough to go against the mutant crab. So it was time to go into the nether and begin collecting ancient debris so I could upgrade this diamond armor into netherite. I spent the next couple of days mining down to the perfect ancient debris level and collecting all of the ancient debris that I would need. In total, I would need around 16 pieces of ancient debris to turn all of my armor into netherite. So with this in mind, I continued spending the next few days mining all of the ancient debris I could find. And well, not long into the ancient debris mining trip, I was finding a bunch of ancient debris. And seeing as I was using my turtle pickaxe, I was able to glide through netherrack with ease. I was getting super lucky, finding ancient debris left, right, and center. After a few days, I had exactly what I needed, 16 pieces of ancient debris. So with a smile on my face, I decided to head back home. When I got home, I began smelting my ancient debris and also grabbing some gold out of my chest. Now, while I waited for the ancient debris to smelt, I crafted a smithing table and placed it down. And once that was done, all of the ancient debris was smelted. All I had to do now was transform these into netherite ingots. And then with these netherite ingots, I upgraded my armor into netherite. I now found myself beginning to get more powerful. I could sense that the mutant crab fight was getting closer. Now, the next part of preparation that I wanted to do before the mutant crab fight was go ahead and collect some potion supplies. I would definitely be needing a strength potion if I was going to stand any chance against the mutant crab. So I found a nether fortress and began building my way over. I explored the nether fortress until I eventually found some nether warts. This is the first thing that I would need to brew potions. The second thing that I needed was some blaze rods. So I located a blaze spawner and began using my overpowered turtle sword to take a bunch of blazes out. The blazes stood absolutely no chance against my turtle sword. The damage that I was dealing was just too much. After taking out some of these blazes, I had five blaze rods, which would be the perfect amount I needed to brew potions. So I can now collect the last resource that I would need for brewing potions. And this was some glowstone. After I had everything that I needed, I took the nether portal back home and began brewing the strength potions. And well, by placing my glowstone into the brewing stand, I was able to upgrade these strength potions into strength two potions. These would definitely give me an advantage in the battle against the mutant crab. So now that I had all of these potions and netherite armor, it was time to build one of the most powerful tools of them all, the turtle trident. And well, one of the main things that I needed to construct this thing was the heart of the sea that I had found earlier in this 100 days journey and began assembling the trident. I put my sticks and my turtle shells into the crafting table and finally placed down my heart of the sea. And there it was the turtle trident. This thing looked absolutely amazing. And well, when I went out the front of my house, something amazing happened. The moment that I equipped the turtle trident into my hands, it transformed into an extremely strong turtle. I would now definitely be strong enough to take out the mutant crab. Because not only was I absolutely huge, I also now had 20 hearts. 
so I could now take a lot more damage in battle. After getting used to my new height, I now had to find a way to get the mutant crab's attention. And well, I think I had the perfect idea. I was going to build a giant turtle statue in the sky. By doing this, I would be able to trick the mutant crab into coming over to my island. And well, because the mutant crab has trashed this place before, it would probably think that it would be able to do the same again. But this time, I would be there to stop it. So I spent the next few days gathering a bunch of materials that I would need to build this giant statue. I began by gathering a bunch of sand and gravel to make some concrete, and also collecting some cactus. This would be used to dye the concrete green. After a few days of gathering up all of these materials, it was time to construct the giant turtle statue. By day 99, the statue was fully completed. All I had to do was wait around and just hope that the mutant crab would see this thing. And well, after a day of waiting, I heard some loud footsteps in the distance. So I decided to quickly alert the rest of the turtles on this island to get somewhere safe. Everyone hide and stay safe. It was now time for battle. The mutant crab was here. <laughs> I remember trashing this island long ago. Well, it looks like it's time for round two. Oh no, you're not getting away with it this time. The mutant crab made its way over to my island and the fight had begun. I drank my strength potion and began trying to hit the mutant crab with my turtle trident. But the crab was simply too small. It was hard to get a hit. But once I was able to get some hits with my trident, the amount of damage I was dealing was amazing. The mutant crab loved using its claw attacks. I had to be careful. I was launched up into the air by the mutant crab, but luckily for me, I was able to water bucket clutch. I made my way back over to the mutant crab to deal some more damage. It used the same launch attack yet again. This fight wasn't going to be easy. I tried to run away and heal, but the mutant crab was not letting that happen. It was extremely hard to dodge the mutant crab's attacks. But once I was able to get closer to the mutant crab, I was able to deal some more trident hits. I had the mutant crab low, but then it began doing something extremely strange. It began summoning a bunch of minions. These things were super tiny and extremely hard to hit. But once I had taken its minions out, it was just me versus the mutant crab. And because I had the mutant crab low, I was able to do one last trident swing and I had done it. I had defeated the mutant crab. I then went over to see what the mutant crab had dropped, and it dropped its claw and also some crab meat. And well, I had an amazing idea of where I would put these items. I decided to set up some item frames in my house and store them in here. Once this was done, I had done it. I had successfully survived 100 days as a turtle and saved the sand kingdom from the mutant crab. Oh, and before the video ends, don't forget to download Monster Legends and claim the rewards by using the link in the description.